God wants you to enjoy your life now. You have to take the step and decide to be happy today. You don't have to wait until everything is perfectly fine in your family or business or all your problems have been solved. And you don't have to wait to be content until you lose weight, get rid of that bad habit, or accomplish all your goals. No, God wants you to be content right now, wherever you are. Contentment is a decision. When you wake up in the morning, you decide if you will be happy and enjoy the day, or if you will be sad and spend it with a bad attitude. It is your decision. If you make the mistake of allowing your circumstances to dictate your happiness, then you risk missing out on the abundant life God has for you. You may be going through a difficult time, or you may have major obstacles in your way, which are good reasons to be unhappy or sad. But being sad will not change or improve anything. A negative and harsh attitude won't make anything better either. Rather decide to be happy and enjoy your life. By doing so, you will feel better, and your faith will cause God to come and work miracles in your life. God knows we have difficulties, struggles, challenges, but He never intended for us to live on a roller coaster one day up and the next day down. God wants us to live consistently and enjoy every day of our life. To do that, you have to stop worrying about the future and stop wondering how everything will turn out. Live one day at a time. Better yet, make this moment count. While it's good to have a big picture view and set goals, set budgets and make plans, it's not good to always live in the future because you'll never really enjoy the present as God intended you to. When we fixate too much on the future, we often end up frustrated because we don't know what lies ahead and this uncertainty increases our stress level and creates a feeling of insecurity in us. But we must understand that God gives us the grace to live today and does not give us the grace we need for tomorrow. When we get to tomorrow, we will have the strength we need. God will give us what we need, but if we worry about tomorrow now, we will most likely be frustrated and discouraged. You have to learn to live one day at a time. Using your willpower, choose to start enjoying your life right now, because life is too short not to enjoy each day. Learn to enjoy your family, your friends, your health, your work. Enjoy your whole life. Joy is a decision you make, not an emotion you feel. Of course, we have all gone through moments in life when something bad has happened to us or when something doesn't go as we had hoped. But that's when we have to make the decision to be happy in spite of our circumstances. Many people live in a constant state of confusion. They are always upset. They are always frustrated. They always have some major challenge that keeps them from being happy. They can't sleep at night because they are too worried. They don't like the people they work with. They get upset over every little thing. When they are in a traffic jam or when something is not done the way they want it done, they get bitter and angry. Learning to live a life of peace is extremely important and to do that, we have to be flexible and willing to make adjustments or changes. When something happens to us that would normally make us angry, we have to be firm in our decision not to let it steal our peace that we will rule over our emotions and not allow ourselves to be frustrated or upset. We have to make the decision to be happy. Many times it's not the big or important things that bother us, it's the little things that frustrate us. And if we don't learn to deal with the little things, they will end up being big things. Let's say you leave your office after a long day, get in the car and drive home. But when you arrive and try to park, you see that your children have left their toys in the garage, so you have to stop, get out of the car, and remove the toys. He's tired, it's hot, and he starts to sweat moving so many toys. It's an obvious opportunity to be upset and frustrated, but you must recognize what is happening. The enemy is trying to steal your peace and ruin time with your family because of your irritation over something that is relatively small in comparison to everyone else. You have to make the decision not to allow that issue to get bigger. Don't give yourself permission to get upset. You will say, well, 
but I can't do that because I'm a very emotional person and I get upset easily. You can do whatever you want to do. God said he would never give us anything too difficult for us, and if your desire is great enough, you can stay calm and quiet no matter what comes against you in life. God gives his peace in our hearts, but it is up to us to use that peace. We must learn to use God's supernatural peace, especially in times of pressure. You have to choose to remain joyful. One day, Victoria took my car to be washed. I have a 1995 Lexus that used to belong to my father, Joel says, and although the car is getting old, it hardly has a scratch on it, so it doesn't look its age. Well, that day Victoria ran it through an automatic car wash that we usually use, one that supposedly has very soft brushes that shouldn't even touch the car's paint. Unfortunately, something was out of alignment in the machine, because not only did it remove the dust from my car, but it also left me with a scrape from the front fender to the windshield at the back of the car. When Victoria arrived, she stopped in the garage to look at the damage. I'm convinced she was asking for a miracle. Our son Jonathan came out, and when he saw what happened, ran to my office to tell me the news. It was a Saturday afternoon. I had already been studying and praying, preparing my heart and mind to preach at three meetings that weekend. My intention was to remain peaceful, calm, and quiet. But along came Jonathan yelling, Daddy, Daddy, you won't believe what happened. My mum totally wrecked your car. I said, Jonathan, thank you for being so diplomatic. Of course I was joking, but I knew I was going to have to make a decision. Was I going to get angry and allow this accident to steal my peace and joy? Would I allow this circumstance to spoil my entire weekend, or would I control my emotions so I wouldn't get agitated to get upset? I could hold my peace knowing that God was still in control. I went out to the garage, and when I saw the car, I have to admit that the scrape was pretty big, but I made the decision not to get upset and to keep my joy. When negative things happen to us, nothing will change no matter how much shouting and fuss we make. I knew that no matter how sad I was about that car, or how much I got upset with the people at the car wash, it wouldn't make the scrape go away. I decided, therefore, that it would be better to keep my peace. I might as well stay happy. The Bible says that we are like vapor or mist, that we are here for a moment and then we will disappear. Life flies by, so don't waste another moment of your precious time being angry, discontented, or worried. The psalmist said, This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Notice that the psalmist said, This is the day. He did not say that tomorrow he would be joyful, and neither did he say that next week, when he would not have so much trouble, then he would rejoice. No, he said, this is the day. This is the day that God wants him to be content and happy. I can already hear them saying, I'm waiting for God to change my situation. That may sound great, but the truth is that God is waiting for you. And if you change your attitude and begin to enjoy where you are right now, God will come and begin to do a work in your life. If you are always waiting for some event to make you happy, you will spend your whole life waiting, because there will always be something not quite right in your life. You will always have some reason not to be happy. I have heard it said, as soon as I get married, then I know I will be happy. But my friend, if you're not happy before you get married, you definitely won't be happy after you get married. Some women have said to me, Joel, if you just hours because I find a man, I know I'd be happy. In a few months they come back saying, Joel, if hours so I could get rid of this man, I know I would be happy. Your partner is not the problem. In reality, no one person can make you happy, because you have to learn to be happy within yourself. True, you may have some problems, things in your life may not be perfect. You may wish you were more handsome or more beautiful, more talented, with Martones. You may wish you were born with more factors in your favor, but you cannot let those superficial things rob you of your joy. 
You have to say, God, I know you made me this way on purpose. This is your plan, and you have given me what I have in my hands to work with. I will not complain or have a negative attitude. I will not live my life wishing everything had been different, wishing I was someone else. Father, I will take what you have given me and do the best I can with it. I will be content with the person you made me and I will enjoy my life in spite of my faults. Don't waste what God has already given you. Have an attitude of gratitude, see the best in every person and situation, and learn to be happy wherever you are. Here's the key. Flourish where you have been planted. You may not be where you wish you were today. You may not have the perfect marriage or the perfect job. Life may not have turned out exactly as you had hoped, but you have to make the decision that you will put the best possible face on the situation. Learn to be happy in spite of your circumstances. One day, I was walking in the woods when I came to a large field where some very ugly weeds had grown, and everywhere I turned my head, there they were, brown and dry. However, as I continued walking along the path, I managed to see a beautiful flower among all the weeds. It was bright and vivid in color, and it was amazing that it had grown right in the middle of all that ugly grass. I thought to myself, that this is exactly how God wants us to bloom where we have been planted. You may work or live around a lot of weeds, but don't let that stop you from flourishing. Recognize that your environment is not what is holding you back from happiness. Some people live wanting to remove all the weeds and miss out on so much of what their life is about. Don't worry about the things you can't change. You can't change the flow of traffic in the morning, you can't fix everyone at work, and you can't make your family members serve God. But you shouldn't let that make you unhappy. By all means, flourish and look at the things you can change. You can change your own attitude and choose to be happy right where you are. Keep a good attitude and continue to flourish where you are. If you make the decision to be faithful and happy, at the right time, God will change the circumstances. He will remove you from the midst of those weeds and put you in a better place. But if you do not flourish where you are, you will not make progress. God has planted us in a specific place so that we will bear much fruit, and it is not so important where we are. What matters is that we are bearing good fruit. Our light is shining. We are good examples. Can people see the joy of the Lord radiating in our life? If you continue to flourish where you are, in God's time, He will transplant you and put you in a new soil where you can bear even more fruit. But if you are not happy where you are now, you will never get to where you want to be. Some people are convinced that life is simply a series of problems to be solved. The sooner you get out of this problem, the sooner you will be happy. But the truth of the matter is, that after successfully getting past this problem, there will be a new one to face. And having overcome that obstacle, there will be something else to overcome, for there is always another mountain to climb. That is why it is so important to enjoy the journey, not just the final destination. We will never get to a place in this world where everything is perfect and we no longer have challenges. As admirable as it is to set goals and achieve them, you should not get so wrapped up in reaching those goals that you make the mistake of not enjoying where you are right now. I've heard some parents say, well, as soon as my kids are out of diapers, I'll be happy. After a few years, they say, as soon as they go to school, I'll have some free time, then I'll be happy. A few more years go by and they say, when the kids get married, things will calm down and then I can enjoy my life. In the meantime, life passes them by. Just when I get this promotion, when I close this business deal, when I retire? No, you need to learn to enjoy your life now. Every day, every part of life's journey. Don't wait for everything to be quiet, for your problems to be solved, for your partner to change, for the business to grow, or for the debt to be paid off so you can enjoy your life nor look for big events to be the source of your joy, 
because even if they cause joy for a while, then it fades, and you are left like an addict looking for the drug, as you will need, and look for something else to produce joy. Why not be happy right now? Don't allow many years to pass only to realize too late that some event or achievement, or even a series of them, does not bring you lasting joy. Cherish today, enjoy the journey of life. These are the best days, and hopefully 20 years from now, you will be able to look back and say, it was one of the best times of my life. You may be saying, but I have so many problems, how can I enjoy life? You need to realize that every person has problems. You are not unique in that respect. We all go through times we don't understand. And even if you think your problems are huge, tragic or devastating, someone, and possibly many people, live a much worse situation than you do. If you compare your life to others, yours may seem like a bed of roses. Never devalue what God has done for you, because even if you have some obstacles today, some people would give anything to have your life. Those of us who live in the US should be thankful for all that we have, and we should stop looking only at what is wrong and thank God for what is right. The Apostle Paul wrote more than half of the New Testament while imprisoned, and on many occasions in cells about the size of a small bathroom. Some historians and biblical commentators believe that the sewage system ran through the middle of one of the prisons where Paul found himself for a time. Some commentators say it is possible that he wrote some of the great and wonderful passages of the New Testament standing in sewage that, at times, would have risen up to his waist. Yet Paul wrote such faith-filled words as, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, and, but thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumph in Christ Jesus. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, rejoice. Notice that we are to rejoice and be glad always, at all times. In your time of difficulty, when things are not going the way you would like, instead of fretting and feeling self-pity, make the decision to rejoice in the Lord. Choose to be happy. Choose to keep yourself full of joy. When you rejoice in the midst of your difficulties, you are hurting the enemy, because he does not know what to do with people who continue to praise God in spite of their circumstances. Our attitude should be, I don't care what comes against me, I will remain full of the joy of the Lord. I have decided to live my life and be happy and enjoy my life to the fullest. We need to understand that the enemy does not want to steal your dreams, your health or your finances, nor does he want your family. What he wants primarily is your joy. The Bible tells us that the joy of the Lord is your strength, and the enemy knows that if he can trick you and convince you to live depressed and sad all the time, you will not have the strength, physically, emotionally or spiritually, to withstand his attacks you will be vulnerable and weak. It is a scientific fact that if you live with a negative attitude, always feeling stressed, worried and fearful, your immune system will be weakened and you will be more susceptible to illness and disease. Scientists have discovered that every person develops a few cancer cells in their body every week, but in the tremendous immune system that God has given us, we have cells that we call eradicator cells. These cells are specially designed to attack and destroy abnormal cells. Studies show us that fear, worry, anxiety, stress and other negative emotions literally weaken these eradicator cells. In other words, if you spend your life always being stressed, you will weaken your immune system and become more susceptible to illness and disease. However, People who live happily with a positive attitude and outlook, those who laugh regularly, develop more of these supercells than the average person. Imagine, when you are full of joy, your immune system is functioning at its peak, just as God designed it to. The Bible says that a merry heart is a good remedy and that scripture is confirmed every day by modern science. One of the healthiest habits you can encourage is to learn to smile more often. When we smile, we send a message to our entire body 
that sets the pace for our entire life. Scientific studies tell us that when we smile, certain chemicals are produced throughout our body and affect our entire system, relaxing us and helping us stay healthy. Whether you have a reason to smile or not, make the decision that you will smile anyway. One day I was standing at the front entrance of Lakewood Church and a little boy came up to me with a serious expression on his face. He looked me up and down and said, I want to hear from you. Okay, I replied, what do you want to know? Without hesitation, the boy replied, I want to know why you're smiling so much. He said it so sternly that I got the impression that it was wrong for me to smile so much. However, I replied, well, I smile because I am a cheerful person. Do you smile very often? The little boy thought about it and said, only when I eat ice cream. Many adults are like this child and only smile when life is sweet and creamy. But if they could just lighten up a little, God could work a miracle in their life. Learn to laugh and stop being so stressed and bitter. A relaxed attitude will not only lengthen your life, it will make it much more enjoyable. With that, we have enough to stop complaining and start rejoicing. The more you thank God for what you have, the more he will give you what you do not yet have. Paul said, I have learned to be content, whatever my situation. You realize that Paul had to learn how to be content, just as he learned how to remain full of joy, for these are not normal or automatic reactions. Paul had to make the decision that resulted in being content. Now, to be content is not to have a fatalistic attitude, accepting the problems and trials of life. Nor does it mean that he should live his life without direction, motivation or discipline. Nor does it mean that you should live without drive or desire for things to change for the better. No, contentment means that you will not be frustrated when things do not go as you would like them to, because you trust God. Don't let circumstances steal your joy and keep you from being joyful, because you can decide that you will be happy and content no matter what comes into your life. You can decide that the little things will not beat you. If you are always discontent, something is wrong. If every morning you get up and dread going to work, dread driving through traffic congestion, dread dealing with the boss, must do what you do all day, and dread going home, either you need to change your attitude or you need to change your job. However, in most cases, God will not change your circumstances until you change. And if you don't learn to be content where you are, you will never get to where you want to be. You may not have all the money you would like to have today. You may be struggling, but as long as you keep complaining all the time about how bad your life is and how you never get ahead, your bad attitude will keep you exactly where you are now. You may not have everything you would like to have or be everything you would like to be, but you need to learn to be content in spite of your circumstances. You need to trust that God is at work in your life. The Bible teaches us that God changes us little by little. Don't be upset or discontent. Know that God is in control. The Bible says that by the Lord are the steps of man ordered. If God is ordering your steps, that means you are precisely where God wants you. Oh, that can't be true, you will say. I have too many problems and I'm too uncomfortable in this place. This can't be God's plan for me. God has you there for a purpose. You may not understand it, but he may be doing a work in you. He may want to teach you, push you, stretch you, see how you will respond in that difficulty, or he may have put you in that situation so that you can be part of the work he is doing in someone else's life. It is also likely that God is using you to be an influence in other people's lives. But whatever the reason, you had better decide to be content knowing that God is directing your steps and that he has you there for a reason. It is interesting that we believe that God is leading us as long as we are getting what we want and we are living on the mountaintop without receiving any of the blows or adversity that exists in the valley. But we must understand that the Lord is directing our steps even when things are not going our way. 
You may be living in a stressful situation with a partner or child who are difficult people, or maybe because of office politics, you are not being treated fairly, or you have to work two jobs to provide for your family's needs. You may be thinking that this doesn't seem right and you don't understand. The scripture says, the steps of man are the steps of the Lord. How then shall a man understand his way? Friend, you will never fully understand everything that happens to you in life or why certain things come against you. You need to learn to trust God anyway and have a good attitude knowing that God is in control. In the 1990s, two men who had played basketball in college, both 27 years old, both almost six feet tall, were on their way to Kenya to work on a mission project. It was their first transatlantic trip and they were extremely excited. They had prayed for months, asking that God would use their lives and that their trip would go smoothly. When they arrived in London, the plane was about to land, but the weather was bad, so they spent several hours flying over Heathrow Airport. When they finally landed, their flight to Kenya had already left. What was their surprise and chagrin when they realized that another flight wasn't leaving until eight or nine hours later? They were upset and said, God, I don't understand this, because we spent all this time praying that everything would go well. The whole church was praying, and anyway, we're already seeing setbacks. When the next flight departed, there were no seats left but first class. The airline gave the two men seats in the front row of first class, with plenty of room, and they were happy about it. But when they were halfway through the flight, the plane began to descend, and they were now heading for the ground at full speed. Passengers began to scream as the flight attendants did everything they could to help them not to panic. Everyone thought their death was imminent. The young men up front had the shrewdness to pray. God, it was bad that we missed our flight, but now we are here, about to crash. We don't understand, Lord, but somehow use our life. At that instant, they heard noises like a fight coming from the cockpit. They looked at each other and said, well, we have nothing to lose, let's see what's going on. A flight attendant opened the door for them and there stood a crazed man, a tall man, over six feet tall, attacking the two pilots, wanting to take control of the plane. The two pilots were not tall and were desperately trying to stop the crazed man, but they could not. When they saw what was happening, these two basketball players knocked the man down and pulled him out of the cockpit. By the time they managed to subdue the madman, the plane had dropped from 30,000 feet to less than 4,000. If the pilots had not managed to regain control of the plane, they would have crashed in a few more seconds, killing all the passengers and perhaps even people on the ground. Sometimes God puts you in uncomfortable situations so that you can help other people. He intentionally delayed those two young men, had them sit in first class, in the front row, so that from that position they could help the whole plane. God knows what he is doing. He can see the big picture, he can see the future, and today he has you precisely where he wants you. Stop questioning and start trusting. Be assured that God is in control and wants the best for you. He is guiding your steps. Your responsibility is to decide to be content, regardless of what comes your way. In your job, there may be someone who annoys and irritates you, and you may be thinking, God, I shouldn't have to put up with this. I don't understand. Why don't you just get this person out of my life? But have you never considered that God wants to have you there to help do something in that person's life? Maybe you are exactly what that person needs. Maybe God is waiting for you to be a positive influence, to speak a word of encouragement, to let your light shine so he can change that person's heart. Choose to be happy. Choose to have a good attitude. Remember that being happy is a choice you have to make. And even if you don't understand it, Know that God is doing a work in and through you. Decide that from now on you will flourish where you are planted and enjoy every day of your life.